Howdy folks, how are we doing? We've made it to another Friday, which means another weekly update floss tube from me, Annie, the Joyfield Stitcher, and we are on floss tube number 16. And today is Friday, August 30th. So, how's it going? How's everybody's week? Mine was good. Mine was busy. Mine went by fast. Um, yeah, another crazy hair situation. Um, more carpool line. Yay! So if you watched my video last week, I talked about my escapades and carpool line. We had a gamut of stuff this week. Um, the reason why I've been doing carpool line so much is one of my dear friends who I work with, um, she had kind of emergency oral surgery last Friday that did not go well and has not felt, and she was out almost all week, was back Thursday and Friday and did not feel up to carpool line and I was like I'm going outside because one Thursday was exceptionally hot today it was rainy and damp at carpool time all day long hot carpool time skies open so I'm kind of sporting some wind blown half wet half well it's not wet anymore because it's it's later on obviously school's over um I came home and wanted to finish up two of my magical stitches tasks so that I would have those complete for this video. So I'm filming a tiny bit later. It's about 6.55. And we're gonna hope to make this one short and sweet and to the point. So I have some whips, some whip updates. I have a tiny bit of some plans, like a little bit of some September plans and some of the events I'm thinking about participating in. I do not plan to be hashtag overcommitted as much this month. Um, we are at the end of August, which is crazy. Next week, I will have some August stitching steps. Preliminarily, August was not a super good stitching month for me. I mean, I stitched. I had a lot of days I didn't stitch. But with back to school, it's kind of expected. Um, but I, it's, I feel like I'm now in the flow with school, so I can be in the flow with stitching. And then I have... Um, so yeah, whips, plans, tiniest bit of stash that kind of goes along with some of the plans. So let's get started. So Magical Stitches, when we last talked, I was finishing up a 500 stitch extra credit. And the one that it with this task was for was number one. And that was based on Grop, and so it had to be your biggest whip. And I just, obviously this is not my largest stitch count, but they said it could be the largest, like, by area. Um, and so I was working through that with Carrot Forest. I also had this slotted for five tasks in 24 hours of cross-stitch acrostic, August acrostic. And triple dipped it with domino effect for 600 stitches. So I think I got 600, uh, maybe. I can't really remember. Um, and so it's coming together. And I love this piece. I love this. It's on a 14 count Ada. I believe this is in Opal. It's one I purchased off of 123 Stitch and love it and this comes with this was one of the kits it comes with the Al Forest embroidery flosses which are beautiful and they come on I think I've showed them before but I will show them again this is what the finished piece will look like so I'm getting there I haven't stitched any in this like lighter orange color yet so that will be interesting to pop some of that in to see what how that jazzes it up a little bit more um, but they come, actually I have some to show you here in a minute with the stash portion of this, that come beautifully twisted up and then attached to their own bobbins. And if it's a kit, this is so smart and such an awesome thing. They come printed with the chart symbol for that color. And this is attached to the color. So I mean, it's like totally goof proof. Um, so here's like the green. The darker variegated orange, um, a lighter green. This is the lighter yellow orange, and then a white. And so, yeah, I'm really 
enjoying this stitch. I kind of wish this was, I started this back when I was pulling more 14s. Because truth, when I started stitching eons ago, when I was 17, roughly mm, 20 some odd years ago, um, I stitched on like 10 and 11 counts. I now stitch on like 18 and 20 count. So there's a big change in that. So I was working on 14 at the time. And while I like this fabric, I wish it was a smaller count. But I think it's still a beautiful piece. It's stitching up beautifully. The flosses are fantastic. I love everything they do. Potter! Enough. Sorry, my dog. Um, he was completely, he's been completely silent and absent from all the other videos. And today he's decided to prance in here. And then, like, scratch at his ear, which causes him to whimper because he's a big sissy. Anyway, this one's in a pouch with some cute woodland fabric with strawberries. Not really related in any way, shape, or form. So then we went to homework this week. And homework we had to post in the homework event before Sunday night at midnight central time. Before Monday at midnight central time. Five whips we wanted to work on. No, whip one, two, three, four, five. And we had to list them in the comments numbered. And then at midnight, Vicky spun a wheel, a decision wheel, and told us which whip would be like our focus whip for 500 stitches for the week. And then we could complete 200 stitches on the remaining four projects for additional points. So I put the one I was least wanting to work on. Oh, he's frustrating me tonight. The one I least wanted to work on at number one, I thought, okay, one's never going to get spun. <sighs> Joke's on me. It was the one that got spun. Okay, let me say, it's not the one I didn't want to work on. I purposely picked it because I feel like I haven't worked on it in forever. I think the last time I might have worked on this was in April or May. And even then, I like started it, got a couple of days on it put in the stitches that are in it, and then haven't touched it again. It has beautiful fabric, beautiful flosses. It's by a designer I love. It's just I haven't gravitated towards it. So I think the stitchy gods were telling me this is the one you need to work on the most this week, rightly so. So Ravenclaw number one was their chosen whip. And so number one for me is Ship's Manor, The Beautiful Sea. So this is what it will look like finished. Now I am not doing mine on green. I am doing this all in charted colors. This lives in a Tula Pink pouch. This is Tula Pink jellyfish fabric that I love. And it kind of has this oceany blue waves looking. Um, this is in all of the Ships Manor beautiful colors. My floss card, these are not tangled. It just kind of looks a hot mess. And this is on an 18 count. Let me see if I have the card in here because I haven't shared this one in so long. 18 count uh, color and cotton in Mardi Gras. And I think this was one I got in a monthly sub a while back. So this one was the one that got uh, 500 stitches put in it. And so um, this is where I am now. And it's way blowing that out. And I don't like it because this fabric is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let me fold it and see if that helps at all because it's kind of showing through. That's better. Um, so it's kind of this purple, blue, amazing, awesomeness. And then I've worked through some a school of fish. This shell was really all, this shell and this motif and this seahorse is really kind of funky seahorse. I like him. This fish this star motif, and then I started on the waves. The waves go all the way around, and that is in Bonnie Blues, and I love how it's variegating. So this is a really fun piece. Um, I do need to put more time in it. I enjoyed working on it. Um, honestly, it's funny because I don't even think I started homework. Not because I didn't have, it, it wasn't because I was still working on anything else. I just was like, ugh. I was kind of like stewing about the fact that the one I didn't really want to work on got drawn. I had 31 whips. I picked five. And of the five, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to put this on there. <sighs> anyway, it's done. I got 500 stitches, and I really enjoyed it. And I am going to plan to have this come out more for some other things.
lay still. Thank you. All right, so the other ones I picked are ones that I've actually been working on rather frequently. So this one is in a pouch. This is also a Tula fabric. Has some funky bees on it because this is blue flower, bee blue flower, excuse me, quilting bee. And this is on a 16 count picture, this plus in Heartland. And so I put a little over 200 stitches into this. So my B is coming together. Um, most of the stitches I put in, I put in a little bit of green onion here and in these, the bottom, excuse me, line of these three triangles. And then I put all of these up in this body part in the abdomen. So I'm loving this. And so the B will be, once the B is finished, then there's Quaker motifs that make up the frame, the quilted motifs that make up the frame. So I'm excited about this one. And there's more on this here in a minute. I'm actually gonna set this in a separate pile because I have more to say about this piece. So anywho, that was a fun one to add some more into. I love that piece. I love everything she does. And I show, oh, she just, she, like I didn't just get the autumn drum. I just saw on her on Threads and Twined Instagram that she got some of the blue flowers Halloween patterns. I don't even like Halloween, but the Halloween acorns, oh my stars. I think I'm going to need it because I love that acorn one. Okay, so then I put 200 plus, and this is for my swap. This is Winding Stitches on Etsy. This is one of her tiny, her teenies or tinies or something and this is the one uniform and I am stitching this on a uh, mystery grab bag piece from Color and Cotton that I believe is an 18 count and it is in a silks for you um, I think it's PR 167 maybe 067 I'm not sure so anyway I got a fair bit of progress on this this week so I had the center motif and from here over, so I added in some more. I love how this looks like a little lacy edge. I'm loving this. I love how the floss is variegating up. I think it's beautiful. So this is for a swap. I think I'm gonna turn it into a pin cushion, which will be fun, which will be a different finish I have not done before. So wish me luck on that when I get to that point that has to be in the mail by the 21st. We are at Great Wolf already on the 21st, so I have until like the 19th to get that in the mail. So wish me luck. However, one thing I have noticed, a little story time, one thing I've noticed is specifically my daughter's after school activities have started to ramp up. Um, this week, this week or last week? This week before last, she had one class. No, two classes, excuse me. This week she had two classes and we kind of got in a good groove. And then this coming week she adds in two more different different activities. And then the following activity we add in the last one. So she's got something almost every single day of the week. Now, we're not fully committed to all of those things. Um, she kind of this year was like, I want to do this and this and this and this and this. Well, we're at like two different dance studios, studios and a cheer studio. Plus she has church choir. That's a lot. So something's gonna give, I think. I don't know what that is yet. We're gonna try some things out, see what she likes. Already she's loving, this is gonna sound funny, but she is in a acro dance class. So it's a lot of like tumbling with dance, which she loves, it's very contemporary based. And then she is in a baton twirling class and she loves that. So I know those two are not going. Now this next week we add in a jazz tap combo class. She really wanted to do tap, so we found a jazz tap combo. And then um, this week also adds in a little cheer class. And then next week we add in ballet. We'll see, overcommitted. <laughs> That's my hashtag of life is overcommitted. Okay, so one of the other ones I worked on, I kind of had a blue flower feeling week. Um, I kind of picked all my favorite projects, current favorite projects. So I picked spring acorns as one of my other ones. So this one got 200 stitches. This is another one that's also on that same picture, this plus Heartland. This was a market day start for me. I'm trying to find my top. I think this is the top. I 
can know by where I stitched and where I haven't stitched. This is the top. So a little bit of progress, and what's funny is the color I picked to put progress on is, well, no, you can actually see it pretty well, is all of this, it's buttermilk. I think it's Gentle Arts buttermilk, and so all these little pockets of buttermilk. Um, and I also finished up all the remainder of, this is Raspberry Frost in all of the little stars. Now after the main, so each one of these gets filled in with more of this kind of alternating patterning. And then there's little cute squirrels on each of these sections and then some acorns in each of those. So this has still got some a ways to go, but I'm loving it. Um, and the winter acorns is kind of calling my name. And like I said, the um, I hope she does a Christmas. If she does a Christmas acorns, I'm gonna die. Like, die the cross stick to death. Of awesome cuteness. Awesome patterning. Um, that would be pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. My husband just texted me and said, no lunch today. Someone took it. No lunchable for me. His lunch, what he calls lunch, is actually his dinner at work. Because he works a 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. shift. So that sucks. That sucks. Like, karma. Don't eat my husband's lunch bowl because he's going to come home cranky and a little hangry. And he's being so good about packing his lunch and not, like, not eating and then going and eating, like, after work or whatever. People. Not cool. I have a little fridge at work. Not that anybody at my job is going to steal my lunch. Like, truly. I work with some of the most amazing people. But like seriously, you're gonna somebody's gonna steal your lunch. Nonsense. Nonsense. Alright, I got one more whip to show you. One of my faves. One of my faves. And that is ooh, on the floor. Way over there. I try not to bump the tripod. Oh, I did it anyway. I did it anyway. Sorry, folks. But took you on a little mini miniature ride. All right, so this is HL's Moth by Kathy Barrick. I love this pattern too. I love them all. And I have so many other good patterns I went through this weekend and was like, oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. I, love that. I want to kid it all. I want to start it all. The problem is, I think I, I'm in the kind of a more like, okay, I don't need to start anything else till I finish some more things. And that's going to be something I talk about in my plans. So. I finished off, I'm kind of working in the bottom part of the wings and color completing down there. So the last time we talked, I was working through this blush color and I had a tiny bit more of that to color complete the bottom part of the wings. And then I moved into doing this dark, it's actually, I don't remember what it's charted as. I could probably look it up, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and the DMC conversion was 924. I went with, um, I didn't have 924, shocking, but I didn't have 924. And so I used uh, Weeks Dye Works Chesapeake. And so it's a little more blue green. It does not show up at all. And I'm kind of wondering, because this has gotten very, it's gotten like kind of like the, when I was adding the Weeks this time, it's kind of puckering a little bit more. And I don't know if that's because of my strategy of color completing. But it's kind of, it was it felt like the stitches were pulling more. Like, and I don't think my tension was any different. Weeks and I are not necessarily the best of friends. Weeks, Lennon, and I are for sure not. And you know what sucks? Okay, that was kind of rude. You know what kind of stinks? I love the Weeks Dye Works um, gingham linens. I was like, yes, I'm going to stitch something in that. I tried it. Nonsense and foolishness. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I mean, linen period is hard for me to jump on board with. So linen period is hard to jump on board with. Weeks linen is like, it's floppy. It has no like rigidity to it. So then you're like, Ooh. I don't stitch in hand. I stitch on a Q-snap, but I was like, I got to get this drum tight and it would not get drum tight or it would get like distorted. And the gingham is so cute. I'm like, Weeks. You already have me like pulling my hair out because the floss knots more than anything else. Plus I kinda like my standard lengths of like 
how General Arts and Victorian Motto and all those awesome other companies. So like, I'm fine with cutting it off, blah, blah, blah. It knots for me. More than any other fancy floss, more than any other DMC, like even my old DMC, it knots more than anything else. So I don't know what that's about. Anybody else running into that, into that problem? Anybody, 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 anybody? I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm gonna try not to be as wackadoo. Although some of you apparently really liked the wackadoo. Wackadoo, wackadoo, wackadoo. You know what's funny is my I made my husband watch it because he, I said, you're gonna get a kick out of this one because I was a little loop de doop -dee. And he was like, okay, I'll watch it. And it was less than 30 minutes. So like it's within his 45 year old male attention span. <laughs> And so I was watching it and I said, well, you know, I gave the title of A Little Wackadoo Never Hurt Anybody. And I talked about how I was kind of wackadoodle throughout the whole thing. Well, the next thing I know, he's gone upstairs to like watch the Astros or something. Hit Swiss man area is upstairs. And he cranks up the record player playing this old like honky tonk song. Wackadoo, 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 wackadoo. And he's singing it. And I'm like, oh my stars. And so I sent the daughter, I said, go upstairs until you're done, turn it down. I get his point. Okay, great. And she went upstairs, Daddy, turn it down. It's too loud. Next thing you know, here I come. They all come. The dog, the husband, and the child come down the stairs. And he's like, but I just wanted you, know, you to know I was thinking about you. And I was like, okay, that's sweet. But, dude, I was loud. And it kind of, you know, like jolted me. Anyway. So, blah, 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 tangent, I went off on another tangent. So let's chat a little bit about plants and I'm gonna make this abbreviated. So for September, October, we've got magical stitches and we've got um, extra credits. So I, I'm gonna attempt some of those. I was not successful in doing but about half of the July, August extra credits. And my goal is if I get this uploaded and all of that, is to attempt to watch part or all of Order of the Phoenix, um, the movie, and Stitch. So I can at least get that extra credit task. I've completed that one every time. Well, except month one because I was not part of month one. I didn't start until February. So that's my, my hope. Now, here's the, here's the thing. I realized that I was spreading myself too thin across too many different projects for too many different tasks. So, you know, I'd created a WIPGO board. Thank you, Justin Marie, for sharing that and your wonderful ideas. I created one. What I did was I put all my WIP numbers into a wheel, spun them, and that's what gave me the ones that filled the board. Came up with goals for each. It's very similar to her process. And I went ahead and for September spun, spun a wheel or did something, random number, whatever. Oh, I have a tiny decision wheel that have and I think I got this from Sammy J. W I P G O, and then one, two, three, four, five. So I came up with two. And so for September, my two focus pieces focus on like a lot of stitches in them are Emerald City Sal, and because I'm way behind, I think I'm on part three and part eight or nine just came out. Eight, maybe. Um, Emerald City Sal and. Mysterious Halloween Town, which currently, other than Temperature Quilt, is my oldest whip. Um, temperature Quilt, I'm not counting because I can't finish that till the year is done anyway. So, what I did was I looked at September and October stitching extra credit, and I was able to fit in Emerald City Sal to one, two, four tasks on that. I had to pull in, because it just didn't fit for everything. I pulled in Prairie School or Christmas Tree Farm for one, and then Fort Worth for one, HL's Moth for one, and then for two of the remaining ones, I'm going to, I think, if I get to it, if I don't, it's really okay. There's a, a cute Halloween Quaker by Sandman that's free. Um, Jennifer Upton, I saw it on her floss tube. I was like, where did that come from? It was either on her floss tube or Instagram. And she has a, the inside track to keep out of so I felt like that was good because that's gonna help me get kind of some time into Emerald City South. Now I didn't put anything into Mysterious Halloween Town because my thought process is, I think I'm gonna have that be kind of my lunchtime stitching or my daughter's after school stitching. 
we'll see how that works with homework and things like that. Because obviously I've got to factor in homework. Um, I would love to do a daily 30 kind of a thing. Um, and that could even be for daily 30 for a bit. Um, I don't think I'll get it finished. Well, it, it could be a quick finish. I think I'm going to show it here in a minute where I am. Um, in fact, I'll do that right now. It's in a Love You More Studio Co pouch. I don't think y'all have seen this one in a while. So this is, for those who may not be familiar about the pattern I'm trying out, this is Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery's Mysterious Halloween Town. It's so cute. It's such a fun pattern. Again, this is one I'm stitching on 14 count. Burp, burp. Um, but it's on a really pretty lavender sunset. So I have a fair bit on it. I mean, it's actually been helpful with magical stitches when there's things that call for like a witch or a bat or an owl because it's definitely got those or pumpkins or, you know, whatever. So, um, I'm stitching it in mostly all the call for. So, I think I had to do one change on the purple and on the pink because they were not showing up with my fabric, being the fabric choice I made, which I love my fabric. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to focus on that a bit. So, you'll be seeing a lot more, hopefully, of that. And then Emerald City South. Now, this kind of goes in with stash. So, we're going to jump all over the place. Just bear with me. This is on a 14 count silk weaver in mint. And I've got mostly called for, but I did venture in and start adding in like DMC Etoile here on this Tatty Poo, I think is her name. The Tin Man is all in DMC Etoile, and as are the poppies. And I needed like some amount of stitches in red sparkly, so that's why I jumped over there. So let's put it this way. The Emerald City is three parts, I believe, in the middle. I haven't even gotten there. So yeah. But I've got this slotted for a lot. So we'll see. Now, part of my stash was I got... I went ahead and bought... I did not know they had this. They had the... Um, Al Forest Embroidery has an, a beautiful floss pack for their sale. So it came with... They had two options. I went with the more general pack. More specifically because I wanted the two that they use for the Emerald City. This is one of the Cowardly Lion colors. This is some of the motifs. These are, this is, I may even go back and I've even contemplated going back and putting this on 18 count and starting over. We'll see. I don't know. I love this piece and I want to do it complete justice. I went ahead and added in this brown, this other brown that is called for in the pattern that came in the larger pack, but I didn't need like the metallic that was part of that. There was a there were some other ones that I was like, eh, I'm good with the DMC on that. Um, so yeah, I love I love that. So I, I'm contemplating that, and I have to kind of contemplate pretty quickly. This is in a made by Mama Joan bag. All right, we got to go a little quicker. So let me show you some more stash. Stash. This was also from Out Forest. This was some more. The this is a thread pack for the Pomegranate Quaker. Um, while I was ordering one thing from Russia, I might as well order some more. And then the other one that I got, and they're actually already in project bags. They don't have anything else pulled with them, but I do have the patterns. And this is the Bluebirds of Happiness. Isn't that pretty? Look at that peacock blue. Ugh, gorgeous. So yeah, I'm excited to kind of start contemplating those. They're not anytime soon starts, but I wanted to show you. That was the only stash I got, dude. That's kind of sad. It was a low stash week. Now, I can guarantee you next week and maybe the further weeks might be a little, ah, like, too much stash. So, I'm going to have to spread the wealth. Um, okay, so one other thing I'm participating in, and this is super fun, but you need to, like, get on it here pretty quick. Um, it's called, it's the Semi Sane Stitchers event for this month, and it's called Choose My Whip. And so, you go in and you post one to three of your whips, and everybody else goes through and votes and chooses your whip for the week. And you get entries if you do up to five, if you do 500 stitches or more. So I'm like, yes. So week one, you can go vote for it. Is ca I'm calling it my blue flower battle, and so it's quilting bee versus spring acorns. So that will run from the first to the ninth. So I'm really excited about that. So briefly, some more plans, and then we done. We done. We out. We done. Temperature quilt needs to get started some point this weekend. We do have a long weekend, so I might. So I got my August temps to do. I would like to get some more into Tranquil Tulips since I'm done with homework. Um, 
and yeah, I want to stitch tonight and watch Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix. And I may take that over tonight to tomorrow night also. The first starts a new year in School of Magical Stitches. So if you are not part, come join for year six. We've got year six and year seven left. It will be awesome. Y'all are rocking awesome. Thank you for all your comments, your support, your love, your thumbs up, your everything, your subscriptions. I'm obsessed with you all because I think you're all phenomenal. This community is phenomenal. I've watched so many amazing floss tubers this week and I've been catching up. Guess where I am? Still at the beginning of July. I'm a completionist. I like to catch up. So um, I'm enjoying just seeing what you're all working on. I'm getting enabled. I found new things that have gone to my wish list. So yeah. I hope you all have a great stitchy week. I hope you have a good long weekend. If you were in the U.S. and you were celebrating getting a day off from work on Monday for Labor Day, I hope you get to stitch to your heart's content. And happy stitching. All of the blessings of this life on you and yours. And have a great week. Bye, guys.